<laughs> Hello. For as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated with the big cats in Africa. A fascination that brought me on an adventure into the African wilderness. An adventure that brought me face to face with the king of the beast, with a roar so powerful it thunders through the open plains. A thunder so deep it took my breath away. In 2008, I decided to go to Africa to realize my childhood dream. I was full of excitement to finally see my lions. I guess my view on conservation at that time was a bit biased by watching The Lion King one too many times. <laughs> I was the kind of person who would be on the streets to collect signatures for any petition claiming to help Simba. and especially for something like banning commercial lion hunts. The ban, which became a reality in Botswana in September 2000, when the government made it illegal to hunt lions commercially. Now, that was a pretty good achievement, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Now Simba won't get shot. Now he can live a long, happy lion life. Today, I want to tell you a story a story about the wild lion population in Botswana. A story about how we thought we were doing something good. But did we really do the right thing? My story is focused in the Hansi area of Botswana, an area of 117,900 square kilometers. And just to put this number into perspective, the size of Botswana equates to roughly the size of France, or just under the size of Texas. And the Hansi area makes up for about 20% of the entire country. The Hansi area is divided into two areas. The first area is Central Kalahari Game Reserve. With its 52,800 square kilometers, it is the second largest national park in the world, a beautiful, untouched wilderness where no hunting is allowed. The second area has commercial cattle farms where hunting is allowed. With the 65,100 square kilometers, it still cuts off for about one-tenth of Botswana's size, but with a population of only 33,000 people. And that is roughly the same number of people working in JFK Airport. At some point in the past, wildlife used to roam free in those two areas, free and undisturbed by humans and cattle farms. But after Botswana got their independency in 1966, people started commercial cattle farming. But the farmers and the lions coexisted. The short cattle fences do not make a barrier for any wildlife, and the lions could easily move through those fences. And now some of you might be wondering how the cows and the lions coexisted with the farmers farming the livestock. But I can assure you that the relationship was far from peaceful. Occasionally, lions were shot because they killed the cows and posed a potential threat to the farmer's business. At this point, we should keep in mind that 70 to 75 percent of, of the beef produced in this area was for the European market to supply our demand for beef. Odd as it may seem, the farmers still had a way of living alongside with the lions roaming on their farmlands. And here's the catch. Tourists, mainly from the United States and from Europe, would travel to Botswana to hunt for lions. The money paid for this kind of tourism was a lot enough to make the farmers tolerate lions on their land. The last lion officially sold for hunting went for the price of 750,000 US dollars. The farmer would not be getting all of that money, but a good portion of it would make him feel secure. 
especially in times where foot and mouth disease could result in big loss of his cattle, it was good to know that there was other ways of keeping his farm running. Since the last portion of Botswana's GDP is also generated through photographic tourism, a new conflict started to rise. Animal rights activists all over the world started blaming the commercial hunts for the decline of lions. The more popular this became in the international media, the more pressure was there on the government in Botswana to do something about this questionable business of lions getting shot by a rich tourist. In September 2000, the animal rights activists reached their goal and Botswana banned commercial lion hunts. The government in Botswana didn't have the money to reimburse the farmers for their loss of cattle. And after my quick explanation of the farming areas, I believe that most of you can now imagine what the farmers did with the lions. Since the area has never been a national park, all lions were now officially classified as problem animals, and permits were granted to the farmers to go and shoot them. But it doesn't stop here. Lions are territorial animals and live in family groups called prides. They mark their territory by scent and by their impressive roaring. By killing the entire lion population in an area creates empty territories. Those empty territories are like an imitation for other lions. This means that the lions who used to live safely in Central Kalahari Game Reserve are now moving into the farmlands where they'll be classified as problem animals and shot. So what have we actually achieved with banning the commercial lion hunts? The lion population in the entire western part of the Hansi area has been killed. And since the area is no longer occupied with lions, the other lions from Central Kalahari Game Reserve are now constantly trying to expand their population into the farmlands, where every lion that walks in today will be killed in a heartbeat. It is not illegal to shoot the lions, and we can't really blame the farmers since he is actually producing the meat that we are asking for. Fact is that by trying to support lions in Botswana, the worldwide animal rights movement and the media supporting this idea achieved that, Botswana, that the people in Botswana had no option but to kill a large amount of the already small remaining lion population. Because lions from Central Calabria Game Reserve are trying to expand their population into the farming areas, we ended up with, with more lions get shot every year. More lions than we ever did with the commercial lion hunts. The only difference is that no one is paying to shoot them anymore. And here's a very simple question to all of you. Do you believe that a lion would mind whether it's getting shot by someone who left almost a million dollars in the country, or by a farmer who needs to pay for the bullet himself. There is without a doubt a big ethical issue with the commercial lion hunts, and I do have that issue, just as much as any of you. But sometimes it's better to stick with the lesser of two evils until we can find a real sustainable solution that can solve the problem. The majority of people on this planet are driven by their emotions when it comes to animals. And trust me, it is a very emotional moment to watch a wild lion roar. Every time I sit in the bush, watching the sunrise light up the savannah, feeling the warm sand between my feet, while listening to the lion's powerful roar that goes through my bones, I feel more free and alive than ever before. I sit and wonder. Wonder how people are able to pay money to shoot lions and then proudly hang the trophy up at their wall back home. I guess that is just something that I will never understand. Unfortunately, that is the case. 
And just like everywhere else in the world, there is no picture perfect or black and white. It makes me proud to see how many people are active in the field of nature conservation and animal rights. But I've countless times seen how the best intentions simply made a bad situation even worse. I do not believe that a single person who went to demonstrate, signed petitions, and supported the plan of shutting down the commercial lion hunts really understood the consequences of their actions. I also do not believe that any of them would still think that shutting down this business was such a great idea after understanding the situation. I'm definitely not a friend of the hunting business. Today, I simply understand that it is not as easy as it may seem, and we need to find a proper solution before we act. I believe that education and awareness about this topic is the key to save the lions. We need to understand that knowledge needs to come first before our emotions. Otherwise, we are likely to achieve nothing or destroy even more. My experiences in Africa gave me the motivation to start Modisa Wildlife Project, together with Valentin Grüner from Germany. The project is situated in the Hansi area, on the border between Central Kalahari Game Reserve and the cattle farms. We are working together with one of the most successful commercial farmers in Botswana, Willi de Graaf, who share our passion for the big cats. We believe that by creating a place where research institutions, government, and the public meet, we can actually make Mudisa Wildlife Project an organization that not only promotes innovative and sustainable management practices, but also provides practical advice and guidance. We want to find a long-term solution for our 30 lions which we saved from certain death. We want our lions back into the wild, and we want to secure a future for all lions in Africa. We wanted to create a project that defines new standards. New standards on how we think, feel, and act with regards to conservation. No one can argue that Botswana's ban on commercial lion hunts didn't make us feel better. But all the facts point towards an altogether different truth. The knock-on effect is that the lion population has suffered even more by this feat. We are still losing lions, and more lions are getting shot each year. This is why we need to research all aspects, seek information and possibilities before we act, so we don't end up doing more damage than have already been done. We need to act now to ensure that the future generations can have the same privilege as we have. The privilege to feel a lion's roar before it's too late. Thank you.